You kept asking for them, so this week, by popular demand, we're looking at the history of the toughest Autobot commando unit around. The team they call in when all hope is lost, for whom victory and tragedy go hand in hand. It's the basics on The Wreckers. The Wreckers were created by British writer Simon Furman in 1986 for the Marvel Transformers comic published in the United Kingdom. Debuting in the seminal storyline Target 2006, the team was part of the Autobot Resistance on Decepticon-controlled Cybertron, a close-knit special ops unit who took on the dirtiest, most dangerous missions, distinguished by their immediately iconic catchphrase, Wreck and Rule. The Rough and Tumble team consisted mostly of characters from the 1985 and 1986 toy ranges who, for one reason or another, were not appearing in the comic book published in the US. The Jump Starters, Top Spin and Twin Twist, the Deluxe Vehicles, Whirl and Roadbuster, and the Autobot Triple Changers, Springer, Sandstorm and Broadside. Rounding out the group were comic original characters, Rack and Ruin, a pair of Cybertronian conjoined twins, and the team's leader, Impactor. Target 2006 followed the Wreckers as they prepared to enact Operation Volcano, a deadly gambit that involved luring out and ambushing ten of the deadliest killers the Decepticons had. Their chances of surviving the mission relied on backup from the mighty Autobot warrior Ultra Magnus. But when Magnus was called away to Earth, the Wreckers considered abandoning the whole thing, before coming to the conclusion that the Autobot cause was bigger and more important than they were. In the end, only Impactor laid down his life, sacrificing himself to save Autobot Resistance leader Emirate Zaron. And Springer succeeded him as commander of the Wreckers, leading the team through their numerous appearances over the next several years worth of comic stories. After a battle with the time-travelling future Decepticon Galvatron left their ranks decimated, the Wreckers ceased to be, joining forces with the similarly shattered remnants of their Decepticon counterparts, the Mayhem Attack Squad, to form a new unit named the Survivors. The Wreckers were one of the most famous and fan-favourite parts of the UK comic, but they weren't among the characters and concepts that Simon Furman imported to the US series when he took over writing it in 1989. American audiences wouldn't get their first taste of the Wreckers until 2001 in the Transformers Universe comic book available exclusively through BotCon, the official Transformers convention. But BotCon's version of the team was a successor to the original, from the future timeline of Beast Wars and Beast Machines, with its own unique insignia and an all-new lineup of Autobots, Decepticons, Maximals and Predacons, including Rodimus, RC, Cyclonus, Skywarp, Tigatron, and convention-exclusive characters like Ape Link and Primal Prime, among many others. It was Dreamwave Productions who, in 2003, introduced the classic Wreckers into American comic books. But at first, it seemed as if they were unsure if they actually had the rights to do so, because when the team first appeared in the pages of the miniseries War and Peace, Marvel original characters Rack and Ruin and Impactor were absent, with Ultra Magnus in the leader role in reference to his association with the team in the UK comic, and the unit wasn't even referred to by name, with only an in-jokey reference to the group showing their opponents the true meaning of the word Rack, alluding to their identity. Still, the later series, The Dark Ages, by Simon Furman, would feature the team by name, establishing that in this continuity it was initially founded by Springer as a splinter faction of its own millions of years ago during the war on Cybertron. If Dreamwave had been unsure about using the Marvel original elements of the team's history, the next Transformers comic book publisher, IDW Publishing, had no such hesitations. Simon Furman featured the classic team of deluxe vehicles, jump starters and triple changers in his Stormbringer miniseries in 2006, and in the years that followed, the team's roster would gradually expand as they became the stars of some of IDW's most celebrated stories in a trilogy of landmark miniseries by writer-artist Nick Roach that really dug into the idea of what such a team meant exploring its infamously high mortality rate, its psychological ramifications, and its blood-stained legacy. 
The first of these, 2010's Last Stand of the Wreckers, reintroduced Impactor for the first time since the original UK comics, depicting him as the team's former leader who had been stripped of his rank after disobeying orders and mercilessly executing the Wreckers' arch-enemies, the Decepticons' Squadron X. Last Stand featured a new iteration of the Wreckers, adding seasoned Autobots Cup and Perceptor, rookie first-timers Pyro, Rotorstorm, Iron Fist and Guzzle, and human member Verity Carlo, as they were sent to liberate the Autobot prison Garrus 9 from the Decepticon sadist Overlord. The sequel, 2015's Sins of the Wreckers, added RC to the team as they embarked on one final mission to rescue Prowl from the clutches of Tarantulas and were confronted by all the terrible deeds of their past. And the trilogy's final instalment, 2018's Requiem of the Wreckers, focused on Springer and Impactor as they put the past to bed and opened up an optimistic future for the team with a new generation of recruits. The same year as Last Stand took the Wreckers to new heights, another new version of the team was introduced in the Aligned continuity. Their story was told across several pieces of media, including novels and, most notably, the Transformers Prime animated series, marking the Wreckers' first time on television. The Aligned Wreckers began life as a team of vigilante heroes defending small communities against gangs of raiders and barbarians back in the early days of Cybertron before the war, subsequently becoming official enforcers of the law during the planet's golden age. Their roster included members from both the classic Marvel and IDW versions of the team, as well as prime cartoon characters Bulkhead and Wheeljack. You know wreckers don't call for backup. They, they call, call for, for cleanup. <laughs> Bulkhead would later transfer to Optimus Prime's unit, and when Ultra Magnus was appointed leader of the team to bring discipline to its unruly ranks, Wheeljack found his officious command style intolerable and also left. Magnus and the remaining Wreckers initially stayed behind to defend Cybertron when Optimus Prime's forces left the planet, until they too were forced to abandon their world. But Magnus would later be reunited with Bulkhead and Wheeljack on Earth in the third season of the Prime cartoon in 2013, setting their old differences aside and forming a new Wreckers team with human ally Miko Nakadai. That same year, aligned versions of classic members of the team were released in toy form as part of the Transformers Generations Fall of Cybertron line. Twin Twist, Top Spin, Whirl, Roadbuster, and the first ever Impactor figure, who together could combine to form Ruination. A combiner whose head was based on that of the team's old boss from the Marvel comic, Emirate Zaron and who was the first ever toy to wear the unique Wreckers insignia created by BotCon 12 years earlier. The live-action movie universe featured its own unique version of the Wreckers, introduced in 2011's Dark of the Moon. A three-man team consisting of Roadbuster, Topspin, and Leadfoot, they were vicious fighters even by the standards of the movie universe, but beyond that they didn't have a lot in common with the classic team beyond a few reused names depicted instead as a trio of unlikable antisocial engineers who all transformed into NASCAR track cars. All of these are just some of the most high-profile incarnations of the Wreckers. From comparatively obscure beginnings, they've grown to become a common recurring element in Transformers stories big and small. Simon Furman was finally able to introduce the team into the US Marvel comic continuity in the 2013 revival series Regeneration 1, even paying homage to both IDW and the movies by adding Cup and Leadfoot to its ranks. While a version of the classic group would even be incorporated into the original Generation 1 cartoon timeline by manga published alongside the Transformers Legends toyline in Japan. Stories from the official Transformers Collectors Club have revisited the BotCon Wreckers from the early 2000s, and debuted a second combiner version of the team, able to merge into the giant warrior Wreckage, released as toys via the club's figure subscription service in 2017. 
and even though they've entered into the mainstream after all these years, that hasn't done anything to dilute their status as fan favourites. As proven by the fact that in 2018, Impactor won the latest Hasbro fan poll to earn himself a toy in the upcoming War for Cybertron Siege line. It seems as long as there are Transformers stories to tell, as long as there are Decepticons to fight, as long as the odds are slim and the stakes are high, the Wreckers will always be there to wreck and rule. And those are the basics on the Wreckers. Let's hear about your favourite incarnation of the team or member in the comments. Subscribe and click that bell while you're down there, and if you're in a position to, please consider supporting the basics on Patreon. 